Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Bill Harris Alice Fay Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family drugs. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us, the 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know... You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Bill Harris Alice Bay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Bay and Bill Harris. Today, Phil and Alice are doing their last program of the season. So they're up bright and early this morning, getting ready to go to NBC for an 8 o'clock rehearsal. Well, Alice, today's the last program of the season. You know, it's been a swell year, and it's really been a pleasure working for Rexall. Yes, it has. But Phil, do you think Rexall has been happy with us? Well, why shouldn't they be? Our program has helped their business. How do you know? The sponsor told me. Mr. Scott said my singing alone has increased their sale of aspirin <laughs> tenfold. <laughs> and he thinks you're great on the show, too, honey. He does? Yeah, and he should. After all, you're much more important to the show than I am. Oh, no, Phil. You're more important. No, no, no. You are. You have more talent, you're a better performer, and you have more personality. I know, but you try. <laughs> Alan, kid, just stick with me, and in a year or two, you might crash the big time. <laughs> Thank you, Horace Hyde. <laughs> you know, honey, after a little vacation, it's going to be nice to go back on the air for Rexall again in the fall. Phil, are you sure we're going back? You know, Mr. Scott and you didn't get along too well. Personalities have nothing to do with it. I got a contract for next year. But suppose he tries to break it. Don't be silly. How can he break my contract? That's what Mr. Scott asked his lawyer yesterday. <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take this little pip to squeak. <laughs> Mr. Scott doesn't think you add anything to the program, Philip. Well, how can he say that? The public loves me on the air, especially the women. Why, I'm the greatest thing that has happened to the American housewife since steel wool. <laughs> Yes, and Mr. Scott says you're just about as entertaining, too. <laughs> he doesn't particularly like your band, either. And I don't blame him. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's wrong with my band? Well, they can't read music, can't play. They're stupid. They're uncool. Hold it. <laughs> Them guys ain't uncool. <laughs> They're dignified, sophisticated gentlemen. I suppose you think they're suave. I do, and I ain't the only one. Everybody says they're the biggest bunch of suaves in the business. <laughs> well, it'll be a pleasure to hear some good music when Guy Lombardo replaces you on the air for the summer. My band is just as good as Lombardo's. Oh, how can you say that? <laughs> Guy's band plays the sweetest music this side of heaven. So does Phil's. It isn't his fault if they sound like they're coming from the opposite direction. <laughs> you people don't appreciate a good band when you hear it. My boys Daddy, can play we're just... we're awfully sorry to hear the bad news. What bad news? That Rexall is firing you and hiring Guy Lombardo. Oh, no, no. That's just for the summer. I'm not being fired. I didn't think so, Daddy. I like your band much better than Mr. Lombardo's. 
There's a juvenile that has an ear for music. <laughs> Why do you like my band better, Alice? Because they play louder, they make more n noise, they are they're funny looking. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Why do you have to come in here every morning with a mouthful of mashed potatoes? <laughs> Gee whiz, you'd think that somebody... Oh, Bill, it's 7.30. If we have a rehearsal at 8, we'd better get started for the studio. All right. Well, here we are, Alice. Let's get into the studio. Do you think the band is here yet? They'll be here. Don't worry about them. When I ask those guys to do something, they do it. They're a lot more loyal to me than my own family, who can't seem to wait until Lombardo takes over. <laughs> See? See what I told you? Look at them all sitting there waiting for their leader. <clears throat> Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. Lombardo. <laughs> oh, these fellows are really loyal to you, Guy. They don't even know you. I'd better introduce you to them. Oh, fellas. What do you want, Carmen? <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Now, look, you guys, I'm Phil Harris, and I'm still the leader here. Quiet, will you? <laughs> I'm the boss of this outfit, and you'll do as I tell you. When I order you guys to be early, I don't want to hear any moment. Hey, Sammy. <sighs> Sammy, wake up. Huh? huh? What happened? Where am I? What time is it? It's time you were up. It's 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? I haven't been up this early since I was in the Army, and... Oh, no! Don't tell me I've been drafted again! <laughs> Not in the army. Artie, is everybody here? I'll see, Captain. Count off, man. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're in the army now. We're not behind the plow. Never get rich by digging in this. We're in the army now. Now, wait a minute, you guys. Shut that. I did was ask them to get up at 8 o'clock and they fight a whole war. <laughs> Not even the right war. <laughs> Fellas, please, will you forget about the army and forget Lombardo? I just want to rehearse the music for today's show. Now, if you're ready, let's start with our opening theme. A one, a two. Guys, I'm... Look, if you don't stop it, I'm gonna bang your heads together. Come to think of it, it'd probably get better music that way. <laughs> now, let's skip the theme. Alice and me are gonna do a double today, so let's run over that. And I want you to play it just as if you knew what you were doing. <laughs> Alice, give them the music. That ain't gonna help. Well, let's try and see what happens. Okay, fellas, let's go. I simply can't but baby, stay. it's cold outside. I've got to go but away. But baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been, been hoping that you'd drop so in. very warm. I'll hold your hands there just 
just like My I My mother will start to Beautiful. worry. Beautiful, watch your and hurry. And father will be pacing the floor. Listen to the fireplace So bowl. really I'd better Beautiful, scurry. Beautiful, please don't Well, hurry. maybe just a half a drink Put more. some records on while I The neighbors may think. But baby, it's bad out there. Say, what's in the street? No cabs to be had out there. I wish I knew how to break the spell. like starlight now. Break the spell. I'll take your hat, your hair looks well. I spell. ought to say no. Mind if I move At closer. least I'm gonna say that I tried. What's the sense of hurting I my really pride? Can't oh, say. baby, don't hold out. Oh, baby, but it's, it's cold, cold outside. outside. I simply must but go. But, baby, it's cold outside. The answer is Ooh, no. Oh, it's cold outside. The welcome has How been. How lucky that you dropped so in. nice and warm. Look out the window at that my storm. Geist, your lips look my delicious. My brother will be there at the door. Waves upon the top of my the My maiden aunt's mind is delicious. Geist, delicious. your lips are delicious. Well, maybe just a cigarette more. Never such a blizzard I've before. I've got to get but home. But baby, you'd freeze out there. Say, lend me a cold. It's up to your knees out there. You really do I thrill pray. when you touch but my hand. But don't you see. How can you do this thing There's to me? bound to be talk to Think of my lifelong sorrow. At least sorrow. there will be plenty implied. If you caught pneumonia I and died, really can't get say. over that old owl, oh, baby, it's, it's cold. cold. I don't get it. It's the end of June, it's 94 in the shade, and they're singing about how cold it is outside. <laughs> well, if it ain't Rip Van Remley. <laughs> Why are you late again? I couldn't help it. I was studying. You? Studying? Yeah. I was up all night cramming for a sobriety test. <laughs> Oh, hello, Alice. Hey, I'm sorry to hear Lombardo's taking over your husband's job with Rexall. Remley, Lombardo is just replacing me for the summer. It's temporary, not permanent. How do you know? <laughs> Why should the sponsor want to hire Lombardo and get rid of me? I got much more to offer. In the first place, I've got a good band. So is Lombardo. Well, so far, we're even. Hmm. Now, let's go to point two. Lombardo ain't a comedian. You're still even. <laughs> Point three. Lombardo don't sing like I do. That puts him ahead. <laughs> Guy doesn't have to sing. His brother Carmen does the singing. That evens us up again. <laughs> We come into the home stretch. Let's compare our individual musicians, shall we? Mm -hmm. I've got Newman on piano, Hagen on drums, and you on guitar, and foul! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the post and start again. Phil, well, don't listen to Frankie. You know you have a contract with Rexall for next year. That's right. And by the way, Scotty's coming down this morning to pick up the option. So, Frankie, don't do anything to antagonize him, huh? Just this once, Frankie. Just be nice to him. Play up to him and make him think you're crazy about him, huh? All right, I'll play up to him. I'll make him think he's oh, a great... Oh, good morning, everyone. Oh, good morning, Mr. Scott. My, but you look handsome today. Simply devastating. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Remley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scotty, how are you? <laughs> I've missed you terribly, and every moment away from you has been an eternity. <laughs> what are you driving at? Scotty, darling, would you like to go steady? Rem. <laughs> Just be nice. You don't have to get engaged to him. <laughs> oh. Scotty, I'll thank you to return my fraternity pin. <laughs> Harris... Uh... Have you ever taken Remley to a doctor? 
something should be done to help him. Oh, something is being done. Uh, he's having his head examined by a psychiatrist. What did they find wrong with his head? We don't know. They haven't sent it back yet. <laughs> Now, Chief, would you like to hear what we're going to do on today's show? No, no, I don't have the time. I'm catching a train for New York in a couple of hours. I dropped in with the commercials. I uh, just finished writing them. <clears throat> Mr. Scott, are you the one who writes those literary gems? <laughs> Did you hear that, Frankie? Mr. Scott is the man who writes the commercials. He looks like the kind of a guy who would. <laughs> Don't you like the Rexall commercials, Remley? I can take them or leave them. <laughs> hey, Scott, what's this I hear about you replacing Curly with Lombardo? It's no concern of yours, Remley, so don't bother your soft little head with it. <laughs> Harris, I have to take the option renewing you for next year to New York. Uh, just sign here. I'll be glad to Not sign... Not so fast. <laughs> I'd like to look this paper over before I let Curly sign. Frankie, now keep out of this. Curly. But you're gonna read it first? I think this guy's pulling a fast one. He's got an awful shifty look. <laughs> he, he doesn't have to read it. Now, I'm in a hurry, Harris. Just sign here. Yes, sir. Well, there's my signature, Mr. Scott. Oh, what beautifully formed X's. <laughs> No, that's not my signature. My name is spelled out up there. Then what are these X's? Kisses. I love my sponsor. <laughs> and I want you to be sure and tell them, too, when you get back to New York, Scotty. Oh, I'm sure that will thrill the 10,000 independent druggists no end. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to make a phone call. I'll be back to say goodbye. Well, Alice, we're all set. We signed our option for next year. How do you know it was an option? Did you read it? Well, no, but... Well, what else could it be? It could be a release form. <laughs> he wouldn't let you read it, and he was awful anxious for you to sign it. Oh, stop it, Frankie. Mr. Scott is happy with Phil on the show. Why, he calls him after every program. Yeah, and you should hear what he says about my band and my singing and my comedy and, oh, what a sneaky way to get rid of me. <laughs> Hey, Alice, Frankie may be right. Maybe it was a release form. If it was, I got to get it back. But how? Pick his pocket. Frankie. Look, Philip, you're in doubt. All you have to do is ask Mr. Scott, and he'll show it to you. I'm sure that he Well, won't. I'm all set to leave, and I'll say goodbye to you all. And hey, before you... you go, Mr. Scott, may I, uh, may I see that option I signed? What option? Oh, oh, that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't have time now, Harris. No, but Mr. Scott, I insist on Harris, seeing... I have a train to catch, and I have to... Rem Remley, stop jostling. <laughs> I have to hurry. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Come back here, Scotty. I want to. Oh, he's gone. Let him go, Curly. <laughs> I got the envelope. Frankie, you picked his pocket. How can you do a thing like that? Well, first you jostle them. When they're off balance, you put your. <laughs> Remley, that's a horrible thing you've done, but as long as you've done it, open the envelope and see what I sign. Okay. That's what it says. Super Chief, car 42, compart... <laughs> Curly, I got news for you. Why? You just signed up as porter for the Santa Fe. <laughs> Remley, those are his railroad tickets. You picked the wrong pocket. If that is a release form and Scott gets to New York with it, I won't be working for Rexall. So what? Santa Fe's a bigger company. <laughs> How are you at making up berths? Good. But Remley, this ain't funny. <laughs> you gotta keep Scott from getting on that train. Yeah, but how are we gonna keep him from getting on that train? Well, we gotta think of something. This'll take brains. Let's put our heads together. <laughs> that ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Did it ever occur to you that Mr. Scott can't go to New York as long as you have his railroad ticket? <laughs> yeah, really, that's it. He could. Sure. He can't leave town. I won't give him his tickets until oh, he... Oh, Phil, this is all ridiculous. I'll go to the Rexall office and ask them what you signed. I'll be back soon. Hey, you're wasting your time, Alice. They'll just give you a runaround. Anybody can see this is just a smart move to get rid of Curly. Well, it ain't gonna work. 
Frankie, we've got to find some way to get that release back from Scott. In an honest way, of course. Of course. All we got to do is break into his house tonight, sneak into his room and... Wait a minute. We can't do that. We'll get arrested and thrown in jail. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to find a fall guy. Who's going to risk a jail <laughs> sentence just Hi, so... Mr. Harris! Well, if it ain't little Joliet Julia. <laughs> yeah, Alcatraz Abruzio. <laughs> Julius, little chum, you've arrived at an opportune moment. We're going to give you a chance to do us a favor. Oh, lucky little me. <laughs> hey, kid, I want you to perform a little task for me. It's a very simple mission. Yeah, it's called Operation Penitentiary. <laughs> now, look, Julius, all I want you to do is to commit a harmless little crime for me. And if you do it, I'll pay you well. Keep talking, pear shape. <laughs> I don't want nobody rubbed out. All I want you to do is to break into Mr. Scott's house and steal something. Anything in particular, or can I ad lib? <laughs> you mean you'll do it for us? Go stick your head in a buzz saw. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Julius. This is important. Mr. Scott has a paper I signed, and if I don't get it back, I'll be fired, and next year I won't be on the air. Good. Then everybody can start breathing it again. <laughs> so long, man. There's a lovely child. Yeah. He has all the charm of an old sweatshirt, that kid. <laughs> now, what are we going to do about trying to get that paper back? Just take it easy, will you, Curly? We got time. Scott can't leave town while we got his tickets. We'll manage to Harris, think of some... Harris, have you seen my railroad tickets around here? I seem to have lost them. Oh, what a pity. Mm. Now you can't go to New York today, Scotty. Yes, I can. I'll fly there. Fly? Uh, excuse me a minute, Scotty. We're not prepared for this emergency. I'm prepared. <laughs> Scotty, I happen to know that the regular airlines are all booked up, but if you insist on flying, I can get you on a plane that costs a lot less than the regular airlines. How can you do that? I know a guy. <laughs> you know a guy, Remley? That's wonderful. Wonderful? Fine sponsor. He don't even listen to his own program. <laughs> Come on inside, we'll call him. Uh, this guy runs a private airline. Remley, I thought you were on my side. What are you getting him a plane for? Don't worry, Curly. You'll never ride on this one. Here we are. I'll just call and let you make the reservation, Scotty. Well, now, Remley, are you sure this is a dependable airline? Would I give you a bum steer? I hope this is the right number I'm calling. Hello, this is the O. Are you going to be sorry you didn't take a train airline? <laughs> this is the right number. <laughs> Here you are, Scotty. You talk to him. Oh, thank you. Hello? I have to go to New York, and I want to fly in one of your planes. Oh, you mad, impetuous fool, you! <laughs> You, uh, you don't sound as if you have much confidence in your plane. Oh, but I do. We have the largest and heaviest planes in the country. In fact, they're so heavy, we had to have an extra long runway built because it takes a little time to get them off the ground. Oh, that's nice, but oh, I want... Oh, you'll to... love flying in one of our planes. You'll take off in Los Angeles, and before you know it, you're passing through Chicago. You mean over Chicago? <laughs> no, through it. I told you. <laughs> It takes a little time to get them off the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, uh, I don't believe I'd care to fly to New York in one of your planes. And why not? For the past ten years, we've had planes leaving for New York every single day. And I assure you, you have nothing to worry about. Oh, well, how long does it take one of your planes to fly to New York? Well, that's hard to say. None of them ever made it yet. <laughs> I must have a bad connection. I can't be hearing this. <laughs> I wouldn't fly in one of your broken-down crates. Please! There was no... We spend a fortune to get the most modern planes available, and you have the nerve to malign... All right, all right. All I want to do now is to get a plane leaving for New York. Do you have one leaving today? 
We will if we have our stratosphere special repaired by then. We're having a little trouble with the motor and the propeller won't turn. What's wrong? The rubber band broke. <laughs> Never mind. Goodbye. <laughs> what time are you taking off, Scotty? Rimley, where do you get your friend? <laughs> he rubs two bartenders together and up they jump. <laughs> now I'll have to take a bus to New York. But you can't go until I get that... Mr. Scott, I'm going to make a deal with you. Will you give me back that paper I signed if I find your train tickets in Rimley's pocket? <laughs> Rimley's pocket? Give me those tickets, you... You dip? No, not till you give us that paper. All right, all right, here it is. Thanks. Okay, Curly, we got it back. I'll take care of this right now. But Frankie, maybe we should have read it before you tore it out. Please. I know what I'm doing every minute. <laughs> Bill, Bill, I just came from the Rexall office, and as usual, Frankie's wrong. They're picking us up for another year, and that was an option you signed. Of course. I don't know why Remley tore it up. Oh, no. Look, Mr. Scott, there's been a terrible mistake. Please give Phil another chance. All right, I'll do it for your sake, Miss Faye. Harris, I'll mail you another copy. Goodbye, knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, most exalted one. <laughs> well, Curly, thanks to me, you'll be working again next year. Yeah, Remley, the things you do to me, I don't know why I don't fire you off the show. You need me. I need you... Remember, Remley, you can be re replaced. Are you kidding? Who can you get to replace me? I know a guy. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But now here's your Rexall family druggist. I'd like to depart from my usual role this evening in order to deliver a personal message to the stars of our show, Phil Harris and Alice Fay. Phil, Alice, I'm speaking now for the 10,000 independent Rexall druggists of America when I say thank you for a season of grand entertainment. It's been a pleasure, Griff. And we, in turn, would like to thank the 10,000 independent Rexall druggists for giving us the opportunity to come into the homes of so many swell people. We're grateful to all of you listeners, and if I ever get my own money, I'll buy you a soda sometime. <laughs> and I'd like to add our thanks to our wonderful cast and production staff. Good night, everybody, and have a nice summer. And don't forget, our whole gang will be back with you in the fall, to, so keep your radios warm. We don't want you to miss our opening show on September the 18th. And good luck on the summer show to Guy Lombardo and all of these boys. Have a swell season, Guy. Thank you, Phil. And now, friends, please accept my invitation to be with us next week at the same time when the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Guy Lombardo and his music. We hope to add to your summer enjoyment with this grand half hour of tuneful listening. In the meantime, whenever you have need of reliable drug products, remember the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. There's a family druggist inside that store, able and anxious to serve you. And he'll be glad to tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Gail Gordon, Frank Nelson, Jerry Hausner, and Ollie O'Toole. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Faye appears through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. And now this is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.